Hello everyone, welcome to this week's GT Sport Daily Race C Strategy Guide. We are taking Group 3 Machinery and we're heading to the US of A and Laguna Seca Raceway. So let's take a look at the detailed settings for this one. We've got 13 laps once again, same as last week. We've got tyre wear very high at times 10, fuel consumption only at times 2 and it's just the racing hard tyre that is available for this week. So no tyre strategy in terms of switching tyres anyway for this one. So the circuit we're visiting needs a very little introduction. The world famous WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca to give it its full name. Very dangerous circuit, bit like Brands Hatch last week. Although even more dangerous this week because we're in the Group 3 cars and not going to be driving four wheel drive cars which can spare your blushes quite a few times if you clip the grass, clip the sand here, you are going to be in big trouble and it's going to be very easy to sort of bottom the car out as you go through the world famous corkscrew and it's easy to have a bit of a spin out there, eh, particularly in some of the MR cars like maybe the Lamborghini, the Ferrari or the uh, Audi but I wouldn't recommend using any of those cars for the race anyway as you shall see as this strategy guide progresses. The car we have chosen is the Subaru Impreza WRX. Now we did do this combination of Group 3 at Laguna Seca and Daily Race C. Uh, it was a good wee while ago, can't remember particularly how long. Uh, on that occasion the Subaru was a very strong car along with the Mercedes, the Porsche and the Beetle. Seemed to be the most popular cars. Uh, I don't think the settings were the same. Uh, I think the tyre wear was a good bit lower. Uh, but I do believe it was also on the racing hard tyre. But we've chosen the Subaru Impreza WRX, as I said. Uh, Laguna Seca tends to be a handling track, uh, and the Subaru Impreza is allegedly a good handling car. Now, I didn't have a lot of experience in it before I started doing this guide, and I have to say that I'm not a fan of this car at all. Uh, it can understeer and oversteer into the same corner. It's very sketchy on the throttle, even when the tyres are fresh. Yeah, I've got to say, I had a bit of a torrid time putting some of these uh, race runs together in this car. But we did persevere and eventually get there and uh, put some strategy runs together. And the first one we're going to look at is the No Stopper. Now you might be wondering why are we looking at the No Stopper first with the tyre wear at times 10 Surely that tyre wear is going to be too high. Now if you're a long time GT Sport player then you will know that the pit loss in Laguna Seca can be quite considerable. If you're maybe new to the game you won't know that but we shall all shall be revealed a little bit later in the video. So the no stop is the first strategy we are looking at and uh, we join the car here halfway through the race run. So this is just taking a look at how the tyres are holding up at the halfway point. You can see there's quite a bit of red there started to appear on the tyre wear indicators. Uh, despite the fact we're on the hard tyres, Laguna Seca is pretty tough on the tyres. There's a lot of uh, twisty parts to the circuit, there's a lot of stress put on the tyres. You're certainly asking a lot of them into the vast majority of the corners. And there's some traction zones there as well, particularly maybe coming out the last corner and coming out the Andretti hairpin. But it does look like tyre wear is going to be an issue on this one. Lap times up till this point haven't sort of degraded too much, so still within half a second. But we jump now to the start of the last lap and you can see that tyre wear is very much an issue now with maybe even around about 45% wear on that right rear. Now I've got the brake balance set at plus 2 on this car. I want to look after the front tyres. I do prefer to have some front tyre grip and then just look after what the rear of the car is going to do. Uh, sort of paying homage here to the WRX uh, rally routes I suppose over these last few laps because we're certainly more like a rally car at this point. They are, uh, then we are a GT3 car uh, with lots of downforce on a tarmac circuit. The car is very difficult to drive at this point. You can see every corner producing a little bit of a moment, which really shouldn't be that surprising because technically, given the tyre wear at times 10, at this point in the race, the tyres have now done about 125, 126 laps. So uh, it's no wonder they really are beginning to struggle. Into the corkscrew for the last time on this run we come with, looks like we managed to survive that, just about, big slide to the right hand side there. Pretty much sliding through every corner here on this last lap as those tyres just scream for mercy. Now this was a particularly poor run I have to say, yeah, I wasn't satisfied with it at all but I'm actually putting it in the video because it will re reiterate a point as we look at the next strategy. So we'll just zoom in on those tyres as we come across the finish line so that Right rear, maybe around 50% worn, the left rear, around about 40, uh, and maybe sort of 30 to 35 on the front right, and maybe about 25 on the front left. So, in terms of tyre wear, that's pretty severe. 
and it's definitely going to produce troubles. But the finishing time on the screen there was 18 minutes 16.2. And as I said, it was a very, very poor run. I certainly think I could at least take three, four seconds off that without too much of an issue. So you might be asking, as I said, if you're a fairly new player and maybe not got a huge amount of knowledge in the game, you may be asking why you kind of sort of driving with such worn tyres. Well, let's take a look why, because Laguna Seca is pretty famous within the game for having a pretty major uh, pit lane loss. So into the pit lane we'll come here. This is an attempt at a one-stop run, and you can just see the length of time that it takes between the car entering the pit lane and eventually reaching the pit crew who are looking a little bit bored there as they wait for the car to come in. So that's nearly 14, nearly 15 seconds before the car is stationary and the team are working on it. And then the car is stationary for 5.9 seconds and it all amounts to around about 14.5 seconds of loss in the pit lane. We'll just very quickly touch on fuel. Fuel's at times two. Fuel is no issue. You will finish the race with around about 50% of fuel in the tank. But Fuel's no issue, but tyres certainly are an issue. Uh, either you're going to have to endure this one, I'm afraid. You're going to have to go for the no-stop and endure that tyre wear. Because even though the tyres are absolutely minced, to use a good Scottish word, by the end, uh, you're going to be so much quicker on the no-stop than you will the one-stop. You just will not make up 14 and a half seconds over the course of the seven laps. And that even uh, before you start having to negotiate some traffic. Now this is where I think PD get things a little bit backwards because this is the perfect circuit to introduce two tyres and make both of them mandatory and then make everybody have this nice long pit loss. It would certainly shake up strategy, mean sort of drivers who are better looking after their tyres would be in a better shape because they could, uh, if you had the medium and the hard for example in this one, you could then, uh, the drivers that are good at looking after their tyres could use those medium tyres for a little bit longer. Or they could maybe sort of even just do a short stint in the mediums and then do a longer stint on the hard tyres, but because they can look after the tyres, they can get away with that. Uh, but instead, we get uh, basically we're forced into a no-stop strategy in this one because we've just got the, the one tyre available. But let's uh, take a look at the end of the one-stop run here and just see how much of an inroads we managed to make into the no-stopper. Now, it wasn't a great run here either on the one-stop. I was getting pretty fed up with this car by this point. I certainly wasn't getting the best out of it. But in terms of a score, the one-stop run was a slightly better quality of drive than the no-stopper. So even with that in mind, and you can see we're having a bit of a moment coming out of the hairpin, with that in mind that I'd say I'd driven the one-stop a little bit better than the no-stop, let's see how the finish times compare. So it was 18 minutes, 16.2 for the no-stop, and the one-stop coming in at 18 minutes, 21.4. So 5.2 seconds of a difference. Uh, so we made some inroads into that, uh, obviously by the end of the race you're doing some mid 24s on the no stop and we're doing mid 22s and low 23s on the one stop. So you are making a lot of time back up towards the end of the race but you're just too far behind to really make any great difference. And as I said a little bit earlier, that comes without, you know, you're not having to negotiate any traffic at that point uh, and it's not an easy circuit to overtake on. So this is very much a no stop race. Uh, you're going to have to endure that tyre wear. It's going to be pretty severe. So the sort of trick for this one, or not the trick, but the what you're going to be looking for in this one is finding a car that you find nice and stable, that you can look after the tyres on, and uh, make sure they're in pretty good shape towards the end of the race. Now, cars I think will be strong for this one will be the Beetle and the Toyota FT1. Now, the Beetle is quite a user-friendly car. Uh, pretty good on its tyres, nice handling car as well, I think that will be quite a popular choice. The FT1 is very good at looking after its tyres as well, but it does have a particular driving style, which is not for everyone. Uh, but if you can get on top of that car, it looks after its tyres very nicely, one of the best cars on tyres in the game, and uh, is very quick as well, very good handling car. But as I said, it's got some quirks to its handling, so do look out for that. Uh, and I think other cars that may well feature will be the Mercedes, it was very strong here last time, it's good on worn tyres as well. And I think a few people may sort of venture out in the Porsche, I think you'll be in trouble in the Porsche even though it's pretty good on its tyres towards the end of the race. Do avoid MR cars like the Audi, the McLaren, the Ferrari and the Lamborghini, you will be doing donuts for days towards the end of the race, unless you make a pit stop that is. Uh, but this circuit is tricky enough in MR cars even with good tyres. I do expect the, some of the MR cars to feature quite strongly on the qualifying leaderboards though, 
Uh, last time out the RSO won by Renault was the quickest car around here. Uh, I found the Audi to be a little bit quicker in my hands, but the, the blue boards were certainly dominated by the, the Renault RSO one. But that's uh, pretty much this one wrapped up in terms of strategy. It's a no-stop. Tire wear is going to be brutal. You're going to have to deal with it. May not be for everyone, but uh, that's the way this one is going to unfold. Let's finish the video with a little bit of a lap in the Subaru Impreza. Coming over the start finish line, this is classified as turn one here, this little curve, and then we're going to be breaking at board number three into the Andretti hairpin here. Trail breaking in, keeping it nice and tight, I tend to find it's quicker than kind of going wide and getting a better exit. Breaking at the number two board, or between the one and two board, into this right-hander here. And as we approach turn number four, another right-hander, just blending off the throttle, try and catch the kerb to bring the car around, but avoid the sausage kerb. And it's a dangerous corner there, you will see people running wide in that one over the course of the week. So breaking just before the number two board into this left-hander here, there's a bit of camber in the inside, you really do want to be catching that to get the best out of the corner. And this is an extremely tricky left-hander here as you just sort of come off the throttle, little dab of the brakes and throw in and hope you've got it right and don't go running wide. And it's another place you'll see many people uh, crashing. And then into the world-famous corkscrew. Be careful not to cut the track on the right hand side here, you'll pick up a half second penalty for that. Just blending the throttle, feathering the throttle until you think you've got the car rotated enough into the rainy curve there. Again using the camber into this left hander, if you can catch the kerb it will bring the car around a little bit nicer. And then into the hairpin at the end, braking just at the three number marker, overslow the car, avoid the sausage kerb on the inside, sort of try and square the corner off the best you can, get on the throttle and you'll carry that speed all the way down here over the I guess this is the longest full throttle section of the track, but I don't think we can call that a straight. But that is a lap in the Subaru Impreza around Laguna Seca, and that is going to be pretty much the end of the video. Again, it's a tyre wear race. If you don't like tyre wear, it's not going to be for you. I will be competing in this one quite a lot. I quite like this combination, and I do tend to do quite well in tyre wear races as well. So do look out for me on the track. Do say hello if you see me. And please do hit that like button, please do hit that subscribe button if you've made it to this part of the video. I do appreciate it very much if you've watched all the way to the end. And until the next one, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you soon. Goodbye now.